Today, we're going to be exploring the real bread and butter of Python object-oriented programming, data classes. And you're going to learn how data classes can save you hours programming every week. I'm going to share with you guys the struggle without data classes through interactive code and then have the after effects of using data classes all in this episode. Welcome back, guys, to the channel. Welcome back, guys, for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh, and I am stoked to have you guys here. Before I dive into the episode, do me out. Do me out? What? No, help me out. <laughs> Hit that like button, and if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. That really does help my videos out and my channel reach more people around the world and the crazy YouTube algorithm. So smash that like button. Now today's episode is all about data classes. Stay tuned to the end of the episode because not only am I gonna guide you guys through and show you how to implement your own data classes, I'm also gonna share with you guys some key tricks to avoid default mutable arguments, as well as turning your data classes into dictionaries and tuples as you need them. Guys, the first link in the description is my weekly Python newsletter where I break down a bunch of advanced topics for you guys and I write about them and I show you how they work all in Python. That's the first link down below. Head on down there, check out my Python newsletter. I made it for you guys. I'm about to start a new series surrounding SQL. Come on and join on in. All the other links down there, those are resources to help you guys grow in this space, so check those out as well. All right, on to the reason you're all here, data classes. Let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna break this down for you guys really good, and I'm gonna show you two really optimized versions of data classes that you can get using today and show you how these save you hours, especially if you're doing this repetitively. So here you can see I've built an employee class. This is just a standard implementation of a Python class. I needed to make my constructor method with all these properties. So this is for an employee. So each employee has an ID, a name, age, department, and a salary. Then I've gone ahead and I've built out all these dunder methods, these double underscore special class methods. We can return the string representation. I can check for equality between ID and the name of the employee. We have hash. This is going to allow us to use our objects in a set or, more importantly, as the keys in a dictionary. Uh, I have less than, uh, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. And then lastly, I have set attribute, which is going to prevent us from modifying the object afterwards. Uh, so you can see that this took time, right? You have to sit here. You have to program out in it and any other methods you want involved with that class. Um, let me run this to show you guys kind of how it functions. I got two employees here, uh, two objects. Employee one is Chuck. He's a pilot. I wanted to be a pilot when I was a kid. And we have employee two, Helga. Helga is a baker. Helga sounds like a baker. <laughs> uh, I can check for, let's say, greater than, right? If I go up to check my greater than method, uh, you can see that I'm comparing salaries, right? So here I could say something like employee one is greater than employee two. Um, if that's true, it's going to return true or it's going to return false. Uh, I'm going to run this to quickly check, and I'll give you guys two more quick examples here. There you go. So it's, it's true. Uh, Chuck, as a pilot, makes more than Helga as a baker, right? Um, now, let's try to update it, right? So um, I want to get the error here, so I'm actually just going to try. Um, I'm going to take, uh, let's say, employee one. Let's take their salary. and Let's say Chuck's salary uh, is now only 100000 Okay, uh, you can throw in a quick exception. I mean, you're gonna get an attribute here. So I'm just gonna print that off as E. Let's get E. Okay, so um, I'm gonna run that here, but I'll also give you guys one more quick test. I told you guys that these can be used in a set or a dictionary, right? So if I'm like a staff set, and let's create a set, and I can just add these in now as elements in my set. Um, that's the great thing about hash is it kind of does this for us staff set 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run the code. I want you to see what it's outputting here, um, and we can do all this with a data class, right? And I can get all the same output. So true cannot modify a frozen object, right? That's triggering our method here. And then here you can see I have a set where each element is actually the entire object itself. Okay, so if you're doing this on the weekly basis, this takes so much time, right? So I'm gonna now transition and show you guys how a data class is gonna optimize your workflow and how you can get it implemented. I'm gonna head over here to my after. I have before, I have after, okay? Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of compare the two here for you guys at the end. To, I'm gonna say, uh, updated class for data class. Okay, and we are gonna say uh, from data classes, I would like to import data class to start off with and I'll get carried away. Um, so remember before we had a class, uh, we had employee. And for now, I'm just gonna say pass. To use a data class, we need to use the decorator and I'm gonna say a data class in here. All right, now I can say something like frozen equals true. Uh, what this does is I, anytime I'm, I'm using a data class, it's usually just a good thing to say frozen is equal to true. This is gonna automatically create the equality method and the hash method. So I can use these as a key in the dictionary or in a set automatically. I don't have to make those methods anymore. Right now, instead of making in it, I can say ID. What is ID going to be? What type of data? Int. So I can just say int. I don't have to say equal. I don't have to say anything else. What else did I have? I had a name. I had age. Uh, I had department. And then I had salary. Right. So you can see here, that's really it. My class is done right? Because this automatically gives you the equality checker method and hash. So I'm going to go back. I'm just going to copy the, the base things here because it's not really going to change much. Okay, copy. Let's just bring those in to save me some time here. So it's all the same code now, okay? Uh, and I'm going to run this and you can see that everything I tried to do previously, I'm going to get an error here and I'll tell you why. Um, I haven't even created the greater than yet. So I'm gonna turn this off for now. I'll demonstrate that one here in a moment. There we go. So I cannot assign to field salary, right? Frozen equals true. I can't change that. I can't mutate that anymore. It's impossible. I'm, it's frozen. It automatically creates that hash for us. Um, and then this still is allowing me to use them as elements in a set. Right, so look how quickly that is. I sped that up so fast, I now have a data class. Now, if we go back to my previous example, remember that I had all of these methods that maybe I wanna retain. I wanna keep less than, greater than, uh, greater than, equal to. I wanna retain these. How can I do that inside my new data class? Well, our first keyword argument was frozen. If I come down here and I say order equals true. This automatically creates all of those for you, right? So all the methods we had are now there, right? I'm going to run this and now you can see that true is still going to function how it did in my previous class, right? There is false in this case. I didn't lower the salary, right? So um, employee one is greater than employee two, uh, what is that triggering there? That's going through the first element there actually, right? Because um, in the previous one here, I targeted salary, right? But now I'm not specifically saying salary. It's going through to find the first integer. So it's allowing me to use that still to check greater than, less than, or equal to, okay? So this is great. Frozen is true. Order is true. Uh, what this does is I'm just going to put here as a comment. Uh, I'm going to put hash equal uh, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or, and less than or equal to. So it pretty much creates all of those automatically for you, right? Really, really cool. Now, 
There's one more thing I want to look at, and that's default mutable arguments. Because this is going to cause issues if we're working with the data class. How can we deal with these default mutable arguments? Let's find out now. Guys, real quick, if you're getting value out of this data class episode, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. All right, back to it. Now, handling mutable default arguments is kind of special when working with data classes. And if you know what these little buggers are, then you know that they can cause a big issue and we need to handle them accordingly. So if I run this code, right, I have ID, name, projects, projects is a list, and I'm gonna assign this project to Chuck, fly to France, he's a pilot, and to Helga, bake a cheesecake. What is gonna happen here? Well, let's run it. If you know, you know, all right, there we go. So you can see that each person, they both actually have the same projects. That's wrong, right? That is completely wrong. That's gonna to lead to unexpected behavior. Now, typically in our class, we would probably just say none if I was doing this the long way and then first check if our list was none. But I don't necessarily wanna do that. I want to still use a data class, right? But I wanna be able to handle these mutable default arguments with some elegance, right? Handle them correctly. So we're gonna import data class to create our data class. I'm also gonna import field. This is gonna be used to handle that. Coming down here, let's use our decorator. Let's say data class. I'm just gonna say frozen equals true. What does that do? Do you remember? Right, that's gonna freeze the class so we can't mutate it, we can't change it. Additionally, I can now use this as a key in my dictionary or an element in my set. And then order, what does order do? Well, order, right, this is going to create those other equality methods for us, greater than, equal to, less than, uh, less than or equal to, okay? Um, you don't need order equals true, that's if you want to retain those methods. Typically, I do put frozen equals true. Because we're making a data class, we don't need our constructor, bye-bye, gone, right? I need ID, that's an int, I need name, that's a string, then I need projects. What is projects? Projects is a list. Here's where it gets interesting. Here is how we handle those default arguments, um, mutable default arguments. Uh, I'm gonna say projects is a list, but it's equal to a field. Now, I could use field for all of these, but it's not necessary, right? Because I know string's gonna be a string, int's gonna be an int. Field, I need to put in here, I'm gonna say default factory is equal to a list. This prevents all that from happening now, right? So I'm just going to update this slightly. I'll be like updated projects is equal to self.projects plus the project we pass into it. And then we are just gonna return here and I'm gonna return my class and we're gonna say self.id, self.name, if I can get it and uh, updated projects, not self projects, because that would be empty. Now before I run this, right, this is gonna handle everything we need it to. I'm just gonna come down here and I'm gonna say uh, employee one, let me just copy this actually. Employee one, I'm going to update that object. Employee two, let's update it. Now when we run this code, we have handled the issue that we were facing simply by giving list a field and saying default factory is a list. Now you can see that we have handled those in the right manner without the need for all that boilerplate. If projects is none, create a new list, that's how we would typically do it, right? Pretty, pretty cool, right? Now guys, I know you've been asking me, how can I convert this, this class? You may have been thinking, uh, maybe to a tuple or maybe to a dictionary. Let me touch on that real quick. If we just go up to the top and uh, we actually have two imports, as tuple and as dict. Now that I have those, I'm just gonna come down here to the bottom and let's just create a tuple. So E1 is as tuple and I'm just gonna drop in here, let's say employee one, and then we can say E2 is a dictionary so I can use as dict and import here employee two. All you really have to do now is print those off. So print off E1, print off E2, and I'm gonna run my code and you can see that now we have a tuple and a dictionary. Voila, right there. 
We have a tuple for Chuck and we have Helga as a dictionary. And you can actually see that we're taking those that we used, okay? Our properties are the keys and the values we assigned are the value to those keys. There we have our data classes. And there we have it guys, the bread and butter of object-oriented programming. I hope that I can shed some light on data classes for you guys. If you have any questions, please do me a favor, drop a comment. And even if you don't have any questions, do you guys use data classes on a regular basis? I'm eager to know as I've been implementing these more, especially in the classroom setting, right? So drop a comment. Um, I tried to cover data classes. I covered default mutable arguments, how to convert those into a tuple and a dictionary. I tried to cover it all in this episode. If you got value from today's episode, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. And remember, the first link in the description is my weekly Python newsletter. Come on down and join in and use the other resources I have down there uh, to help you grow, to help you learn more. Well, guys, that's all for this week's episode of Code with Josh. Until next time, I'll see you then.